This message is brought to you by the friends and partners of Kakra Baden. Welcome to Air Power with Kakra Baden, teaching the nations with signs and wonders. Why live in darkness when the light of God's word has solutions? Kakra is the teacher of the word who also ministers with miracles and prophetic anointing. He's the senior pastor of the Morning Star Cathedral, Lighthouse Chapel International, Accra, Ghana. Now, today's message. Hello. Kakra is still sharing on the exciting series titled The Question and Politics. So far, we've learned that in choosing leaders, we must adhere to the principle of public interest and peace and security. Let's join Kakra as he continues with the next principle. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Listen to what it says. It says, Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Is that when you have a nation where the people are righteous, that nation arises. But where sin abounds, that nation, it goes down. It doesn't matter how many prayer meetings they attend, they'll still go down. It doesn't matter how many honors they attend, they'll still go down. They may be on a 40-day dry fast, but they will still go down. So it says, righteousness exalts a nation. That's godliness. It pushes things up. You know, sometimes when I travel, let's say I go to the States, you know, I understand why business flourishes so much. You pay for something, you order. In the morning, you open your door. Boxes are there. The thing is waiting for you. Nobody takes it. You are living in your area. <laughs> you come, you pick your things, you take it to your room. Just like that. I realize that. This is just an example. So you realize that even in an environment where people are not righteous, even when it comes to even doing business, there are many things you cannot do because you suspect everybody. Righteousness. People can go into positions and steal money. The underdevelopment of Africa is as a result of stealing. That's the reason. There is enough money. Do you know there's enough money? That's what is there. For corruption and stealing. I mean, I look at Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, he has not said he's born again. He has not said he's a priest. He has not said he's a Christian. He goes and sleeps with other girls. That's all. He loses all his endorsements. He loses everything. They disgrace him. Now he can't play golf again. Then I ask myself, this guy, is he a pastor or something? He's not a pastor. He's just an ordinary man. But you see, as a, a sports brand or whatever, they feel that he must exhibit righteousness and be a good example. So all this money that they are giving to you, they require a certain stand, moral standing for them to back you with so much money. So when the guy fails, immediately, every all the, all the endorsements, all the people who are supporting, they say sponsorship, they say we're drawing their money. And I ask myself, is he a pastor or what? You see, he's not a pastor. But in societies where righteousness is protected and valued, even if they are not pastors, people perform at a higher level. People perform at a higher level. That is why we cannot sit down. You see, irrespective of what party you are in, right is right, wrong is wrong. The fact that you are in a party does not mean you cannot afford to speak the truth. At least, as for the truth, you must be able to say it. So God said, let's look for people who promote what? Godliness. Because righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. I always say the reason why in Africa we don't have businesses that have lasted over 200 years is because of polygamy. That's why we don't have businesses that have lasted for over 200 years. Because their man has three wives, so nobody feels, feels insecure. And when you have, even in a family where people don't feel secure, people will not put in the energy and the resources and the time that is, uh, that is needed even to develop the family business. Because they don't know when you die what you will say in your will. So because of that, everybody, everybody goes back to start from ground zero all over again. When God said one man, one wife, you say one man, one wife, and other girls. You see... So you are destroying industries by your immorality, if you don't know. That's why we don't have huge industries that have lived for hundreds of years. It undermines security and it destroys even industries. Number five, honesty. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life 
in all godliness and honesty. This is talking about corruption, honesty. So the principle of honesty. You know, when you are in a country, the structures, the systems must be such that you don't have to tell lies to get things done. You don't have to do wrong to get things done. Look, Africans, eh, they are like all other human beings. Really, they are not corrupt. It's the system that forces people to be corrupt. You see, the, the, the systems fight honesty. They don't encourage it. The systems themselves, they don't encourage honesty. They fight honesty. So when we are choosing people, look, we should choose people who will create systems that fight dishonesty, but encourage honesty. Those are the things that must inform our decisions. In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7, Solomon said, Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Lest I be poor and steal. Or I be rich and take the name of my God in vain. Solomon mentioned two diseases. He says one disease of the poor is stealing and telling lies. One disease of the rich is vanity and pride. Saying, who is God? We don't need God. We depend on ourselves. So Solomon said, don't take me up too much. Don't take me down too much. Just let me be in the middle. That's what's called the middle class. We have to create a middle class. Big one. They are not so rich. They are not so poor. But at least the majority of the people are in this bracket. When we don't create honest systems, we can never have a, a big middle class. We can. We would rather have a lot of poor people down there. A smaller middle class. In Isaiah 59 verse 14, Isaiah said, Judgment is falling in the street. Judgment is turned backwards. Justice stands afar off. Truth is falling in the streets. Equity or fairness cannot enter. For us to create an honest society, you know, the laws must work. Judgment and justice, it must work. And it must be upheld by all of us. Are you understanding me? Yeah. Verse 14, then it says, next verse 15, it says, He that departed from evil maketh himself. A prey. A prey is an animal that other animals eat for their food. So he says, in those days in Israel, the person who is rather doing right, he is the one who is the victim. And the ones who are doing wrong, they are the ones who do well. He who departs from evil, he rather makes himself a prey. We must get serious. Push your neighbor and say, let's get serious. Finally, I close. Freedom. Put somebody say freedom. freedom. One day somebody bought me a dog from Kenya. Wonderful dog. Nice dog. Foreign dog. Exotic breed. That dog flew on a plane to get to me. The person gave it to me as a gift. A flying dog. Even some dogs fly. So this dog arrived at the airport and I went to meet the dog. Beautiful dog. And because the dog was from Kenya, I, I decided to call the dog Yuhuru. Yuhuru means freedom. So I brought Yuhuru to home. After about five days, I couldn't find Yuhuru again. <laughs> Missing. Somebody opened my gate, and I think it went out. From that time, I didn't see Yuhuru again. I was very sad. Then after about a week or two, one day I was driving home in the night. Lo and behold, here was Yuhuru. Standing in the middle of the road with some wee smoking dogs from the area. <laughs> Drag taking dogs from the area. Stray dogs. <laughs> Wild stray dogs. A Jabba dogs. Oh. So I braked. I said, Yuhuru. I got down. I was running. Oh, Yuhuru. He and the wee smoking dogs. <laughs> from that day to today, I've not seen Yuhuru again. I was sad. I said, Yuhuru, that's a bad dog. You fly on a plane. Look at these people you are working with. 
Then I realized I selected a bad name. Yuhuru means freedom. So it was living up to his name. Uhuru. Anyway, I close. Freedom. The Bible says, <laughs> this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. This one talks about the freedom of religion, that there should be an environment of freedom so that even whatever religion that you belong to, you should be able to practice it. Freedom. So freedom is good. So freedom of religion is just one. Here's about freedom of religion. Now I'm talking about the principle of freedom generally. There are some countries when you go there, you will understand. You, look, I mean, you know, Americans always talk about the land of the free, the land of the bold. We are free people. I used to wonder, what freedom is this? Because see, there's so much freedom here that when they say freedom, I used to wonder, I mean, what freedom is this? But travel and see. You will see countries, even church, you cannot go. Pray, go build their church. It's not possible. The freedom that we have, we must protect it. We should not elect people who will take away our freedom. It should never happen. When I was young, during the revolutionary days, look, freedom was curtailed. There were many things you could not do. Even to buy bread, every house has an allocation for the week. So even if you have money, it's not a point. Your allocation is maybe three loaves of bread for every house. So you go, you have your card, you buy your bread, they take it. Some of you, you were not alive at that time. But it was there. Freedom. But now here we are. Freedom. You buy whatever you want to buy. You do whatever you want to do. There are many radio stations. In the past, there was no radio station. No, 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 no. It was forbidden. But now plenty. It's a major. The principle of freedom. So God said, let's elect people. Let's pray for people. Who will guarantee what? Our freedom. Put your hands together, stand to your feet as we close. Mind works. The way you think eventually defines your life. The first sign of a renewed mind is a practical mind. You are doing business, whatever business you are doing, look, you must be decisive. That's what I'm doing. Otherwise, don't make progress. It takes time to succeed at anything. And being decisive helps you work at the same thing for many years and a diligent man shall abound it is therefore imperative that you develop the right way of thinking Kakrabading in this message series titled mind works will give you some principles that will guide your way of thinking in order to succeed in life order this message series through the following means Call us on WhatsApp or send a WhatsApp message to plus 233 55 700 9010. You can also send an email to info at the barbadian.org or make a regular call or send a text to plus 233 20 Our office hours are 10 to 16 hours GMT. Thanks for listening. Today we learned that we must elect leaders who create an environment that allows freedom of religion, speech, and freedom in other forms. This is the principle of peace and freedom. So you want to pray this prayer after me? You want to really give your life to Jesus? Be serious. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Come and live in my heart. Come and live in my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you died. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. Be the Lord and Master of my life. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. For, coming into my heart. for coming into my heart. Amen. Before we leave, here is a praise report to boost your faith in the Lord. This one says, Dear Pastor, for many years I used to have many spots on my skin. They used to be everywhere. My hands, in between my feet, my fingers, my thighs, my waist, everywhere. I asked you to pray for me, and you prayed for me. From the day you prayed for me, Pastor, those spots started drying up and disappearing. I am amazed because God has healed me. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Oh, our God is good. Our God is good. 
Thanks for your time. You can contact us, see counselling, ask for prayer, order today's full length message or order books through the following means. Call us on WhatsApp or send a WhatsApp message to plus two three three fifty five seven hundred ninety ten. Send an email to info at kakrabaden.org. You can also make a regular call or send a text to plus two three three two zero seven five seven five two one five. Our office hours are 10 a.m. to 1600 hours GMT. Finally, write to us, share your testimony and how this podcast has been a blessing to you. Join us same time tomorrow as Kakra continues this message.